and welcome to your hometown solutions, where we cover everything real estate related from foreclosures to feng shui. <laughs> you just heard my co-host, Jonathan Lack. Jonathan Lack, hello and welcome back to the studios. Thank you for having me back, Jean. Looking forward to a good show today. Oh, wow. We've got a lot to cover and we've got a really exciting guest with us. But again, let's talk about the three hats that you wear um, to give people an idea where we're coming from here on the show. We try to highlight anything that has to do with real estate, the community involvement. So, Jonathan, talk about your three businesses. Well, I am a transactional real estate attorney with my firm of Lack and Lack Chartered located in Indy Atlantic, Florida, but doing business throughout the state of Florida. I also have Waterview Title Services, which is a full service real estate, uh, title insurance agency. And finally, Waterview Realty Services, which is a full service real estate brokerage, again, operating throughout all of Florida, but primarily focusing on cent- uh, East Central Florida, Brevard County, and also South Florida, the Bro- Broward and Palm Beach County areas. Go ahead and give out your information on how they can contact you or a website and um, let them well, know the all, two what's main, going on. <laughs> the two main ways to reach me, uh, the law office website is lacklaw.com. That's L-A-C-K-L-A-W.com. And then we also have waterviewre.com, R-E being for real estate. So waterviewre.com would get to Waterview Realty Services, our full service real estate brokerage. A lot of people don't realize, and we're, we have an exciting guest, and I don't want to take up a lot of time about other things, but there, uh, we, we want to make sure that our listening audience knows all the various things that real estate offices do for them and real estate brokers and how involved they are in the community. So there's a lot of things that a real estate attorney can do, and we won't get into all those details, but give out the lack and lack uh, chartered website because there are opportunities there that maybe they just need a real estate attorney to go over maybe contracts or if they're selling their home to a friend or a family member and things like that. Sure. Well, again, you can reach me at the website is lacklaw.com and you can reach me by phone at area code 321-953-5115. What a real estate attorney does that's different than a real estate agent or realtor um, is provide representation uh, to the client in the purchase or sale of their home. The real estate agent helps bring a buyer and seller together. And of course they do a lot of work in that regard and they hold the hand of the buyer or seller and make sure the transactions go smoothly, but they're still limited in their service to bringing a buyer and seller together and again, helping coordinate inspections and things of that nature. As an attorney, I will represent one or the other party and make sure that their interests are being served. The goal is to have a smooth and successful transaction. So if I have a buyer who's looking to buy a home, my job is not to make it difficult for them to buy it, but rather to make the process go smoothly. However, I also want to make sure that they are getting the benefit of the bargain when they've entered into the contract. So as an attorney, we provide a slightly different level or a different type of service than as a real estate agent. Well, we have, thank you, Jonathan. And we have a guest with us today that has a wide variety of um, background in the media and doing some exciting things for the community. And I'd like to welcome on board with us today, Ralph Perone Jr. Hello, Ralph. And thank you very much for having me today. Appreciate the, uh, the invite. And tell us a little bit about um, your involvement in real estate. How did you get started in real estate? Well, in uh, 1985 is uh, when my father really kind of got involved himself. He had sold his uh, landscaping company at that time and started a retirement early on, about 28 years of age. And uh, funny enough, mom did not think that was uh, too much fun (laughs) for her. So she asked him to get back to work and find something to do. And he started getting into real estate. So at a young age, I was only about seven and I was going on to all these job sites and I was being involved in a lot of acquisitions and we accumulated around 180 uh, residences in, in, in South Florida. So I was kind of raised in this as my dad was a real estate investor. And uh, going through college, I decided it was pretty interesting. And I decided to create my own business program by uh, getting a business administration degree from the University of Central Florida, a marketing degree, as well as finance, because I felt that real estate was always going to be my calling. 
And so as soon as I graduated from the University of Central Florida, I obtained my real estate license and uh, been doing that for about 20 years. And we're both, uh, Jonathan and I are both from South Florida. And I read your bio. Didn't you go to, was it North Miami High? Southwest Miami South, Senior High. Southwest. And you right. went to? I was South Broward. There you go. So we were all rivals. I went to Stranahan in Fort Lauderdale. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we're all South Floridians that found our way up here, which is paradise. Um, you're a bit of a celebrity, Ralph. Um, you, I know you don't like to admit it, but you are. Um, you've been involved with the House Hunters program. And we like to tell people here on our show that we have a lot of involvement with the HGTV shows um, because we try to bring to light various things that are happening in real estate. We've had um, people on the show that have to do with uh, finance, uh, remodeling, uh, roofers. We've had stagers, anything that, that you sometimes see on the HGTV shows. But House Hunters is one of those popular shows, but you've you've also been involved in a couple others. Was House Hunters your first one or was your show um, uh, the first one that you had on air on HGTV and what was the name of your show? Well, we were very fortunate and uh, how this all kind of came about with the introduction of House Hunters and Pie Town Productions out of Southern California was that my business partner, she was one of my realtors and she was working for me out of one of my South Florida offices. She actually went through the whole process and she won the TV show that Donald Trump has Right. called The Apprentice. Apprentice. Uh-huh. She was the third season and the first female winner. And upon winning, we had the opportunity to do some really cool things. For example, one of them is we renovated the Mar-a-Lago mansion down in South Florida. Mm-hmm. And nice. we were the most expensive listing uh, in the world at the time. Mm-hmm. We had listed that property at $120 million. Mm-hmm. So when you think of luxury real estate, um, my firm, we have represented the highest of all luxury in the United States at $120 million. What do you uh, think it's going for now? <laughs> well, it's off the market with his presidency, of course. Um, it's not something he had sold. It was more one of those things to break the U.S. record and be the first person to go over $100 million in a mansion of such. And where else better to do it in South Florida and Palm Beach? Right. So that uh, House Hunters is how you you got acquainted with them. But then you've been, do they call it a guest or realtor on the show? You're kind of the uh, walkthrough person of finding properties for House mm-hmm. Hunters. I know they have their regulars, but when they do shows in Florida, they've asked you to be the the network representative. It's a very unique thing. We had actually, after she won the TV show The Apprentice, they had uh, our, our year was over with that contract. Um, we had done a lot of really cool things with the Trump Organization, from being a speaker at the National Association of Realtor Convention for Lowe's. Um, we had uh, private jets uh, awarded to us so that we could fly investors from South Florida to Orlando, and we were doing condo conversions where we converted over three hundred million into one point one billion dollars for the Trump Organization and a few others down in South Florida. This led us into massive opportunities, and that's how we actually got to be affiliated with the House Hunters and the HDTV company. Um, we had basically uh, been picked up for a three-year contract with My House Is Worth What. My House is Worth What was the name of the TV show, and we had it, like I said, for three years. And during that time frame, I was a star, um, if you would call it that, on House Hunters. I did five House Hunters shows, and we did 36 My House is Worth What. Wow. Very good. And during that time frame, we were you know, Fox News analysts. We were on MSNBC. Um, people would come to us because of our massive network that we had amassed. Exactly. Uh, we had basically started uh, answering questions for, for real estate you know, uh, across the country. Exactly. It's that media exposure. As we've had conversations in the past, uh, once you become known as the credible source in your field, everyone comes calling. They want your input on whatever they're talking about. Absolutely. Um, so the tell us a little bit about how, I don't know, some of this is old, but we're, I think our audience is always interested. On My House is Worth What uh, was a half an hour show, and you basically went in with like an, uh, a CMA or an appraiser, or how did you figure out what their house was worth? The My House is Worth What show was more of a premise on the listing side, uh, where the house hunters is more premised on the buying side of the transaction. So we would basically go on the My House is Worth What. Was the curiosity was, is do we stay or do we go? And mm-hmm. there's a couple of shows that have almost similar premises right. now out there. Um, and what we'd basically do is we would go in as the, the star. We would basically do a CMA. We would come in there and do an analysis and help them make the decision whether it was time to move out of the home, upsize, downsize, or we're just basically give them the facts. It was a curiosity that they needed to know the value and 
They doubt knowing the value, they could not make the determination of the next step in their life. Now, how did you have your show set up? Because we're going to talk about House Hunters and some of the other HGTV shows I'm, I'm sure run along the same premise. Um, they are kind of set up as a reality show, but in, re- in reality, on the reality show, it's, uh, it's, it's more rehearsed or it's already uh, 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 set information that you kind of backtrack and, and, and completely recreate it as if it's happening live when it's in reality might have happened several months before or... Give us a premise on how maybe house hunters, and for those of you that don't know, understand house hunters or perhaps haven't seen it, um, what is the premise behind house hunters? It's a kind of a choice of three properties and so forth. Yeah, house hunters specifically is a five-segment TV show, and the first segment is broken into the problem. It's basically we have an issue. We have a large family, combined family. We're moving. Whatever the storyline is, that's going to be your premise Then we have the next three homes that we'll identify to be shown to the customer, the client, the buyer. We go through those series of those three showings, and um, we go thoroughly through the home looking at all the pros and cons. And then the fifth section or the fifth part would be the reveal where we announce what house is actually the home that the buyer selected. This process of filming is approximately five days, about 35 to 40 hours of filming. And once it's all computed, it comes out to be about 26 minutes of airtime. That 26 minutes of airtime, it takes about four to five months of editing. So there's about a four-month delay in process from the time of filming to air date. I know. And when I watch it, I'm always guessing, which one are they going to pick? And I try to figure it out based on little keywords that they might say and different things. And, of course, what the audience doesn't know, and it's uh, revealed out there in Wikipedia, and any time you want to look up any of these shows, is basically the person has already decided on the house and then there's two others that uh, so they they've already bought the house and they kind of back into it basically showing what what would happen prior to them buying the house so there's two other listings give us a little information on how that comes apart uh, also how do they choose their people uh, locally here do you have a hand in who becomes on the show or do they have people write in want to want to be on the show how does that work for house hunters well, great question. How we handle that is I have a good relationship with Patrick, who's at Pie Town Productions. He's one of the major production companies that works directly with HGTV. What they do, unfortunately, is they will not spend money for the taping and the video production if the home hasn't been purchased and closed. So you hit the nail on the head. Uh, Wikipedia is correct. Uh, it does take place in the manner in which we purchase the home, and after the closing, we contact Pie Town Productions. And then they send out from a local venue, whether it be Orlando or Tampa, a film crew, which is pretty much going to be your film guy. Um, you're looking at somebody to do your your, your start and stops and your, your lighting. Uh, once everything's done um, and produced, a, we have to actually go out and find two other homes because we obviously have our subject home that was purchased and we own it. Um, but we do need to contact the real estate community and find two other homes that would probably been along the way or something they may have been interested in. Um, but they may not have actually seen that home, to be honest with you, during the real search when we were out there grinding every day looking for that perfect dream home. These are two homes that are found after they've already purchased, and those are basically then put on the show with you know releases and everything. Mm-hmm. Has it ever happened? This is what gets me now knowing this. They've purchased the home. You're now finding two homes that they haven't seen. Have they ever thought, gosh, I wish I had seen that house before I purchased this one? <laughs> I had similar <laughs> statements. I wouldn't say the word home, but they fell in love with maybe a bathroom or a backyard or a view, uh-huh. but I don't know if they would have given up the whole home for it. Right. So yeah. when they're walking through the sh- on the show, they're, they're walking through three homes. You're making comments. Oh, I like this bathroom. Oh, I really don't like the way that sink is laid out or laid out or whatnot, things of that nature. So that's the nature of the comments. One of the three homes they're walking through is actually currently their home. That's right. correct. Okay. The filming does take place after, so all right. those comments are really acted comments. Right. Um, and there's usually three tapes or three versions of every scene. Mm-hmm. So therefore, let's say it's the walk up to the front door. Mm-hmm. They will set the camera crew in the foyer of the home. As you grab the handle and open, mm-hmm. they will be taking three takes right. Right. Mm-hmm. of you opening the front door. So your verbiage from take one may be edited to the filming of tape three, mm-hmm. and it, it, it sometimes happens to where you realize that you may have said that at a different moment. Right. Hmm. So technically, Jonathan, because I've watched the show, this is kind of interesting. You, uh, 
it appears that they have never seen these three homes, right. but in reality, they or, own or one or of them. Living in one of them. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's fascinating. Just, but so it is again, that's what. But makes that's how most TV, of them are yeah. set up. I yeah. like to watch the American Pickers and things like that, and they always walk up to the door and knock on somebody's door, and they open up, and they never look in the camera, and you know, doggone well, that anybody opening their door and they see a camera crew there would be looking in there. So it's all rehearsed. It's it's all set up to give us the the feeling of the storyline because you have to do a lot of editing and it's and it uh, it's television TV. it's good yeah. tv yeah. so the um that kind of brings us up to date you actually and i i just want to touch on this a, a moment because i thought it was fascinating you actually had the opportunity to be the guest real estate um celebrity on house hunters with your own family showing them a house how did that work out for you with your mother and father showing them a house well ironically being involved with the home house hunters well, ironically enough, House Hunters had no interest in Brevard County about eight or ten years ago. Um, it was difficult to get them to come out here. My house is worth what we did many shows in Orlando and around the country, some in Hawaii even. And when I did all the other previous House Hunters, three of them, we did them in Orlando. Mm-hmm. We did one in Castleberry. We did one in downtown College Park. And we did one over by Disney. And I told the director, I said, can we start doing something different, someplace different? And I told them about Brevard County, in which at that time they said, well, we don't really know much about it and don't really care. I asked them to go ahead and allow me to present them some material, and I did, and they fell in love with our town, and they fell in love with Brevard County. And since then, I think we've done nine or ten total shows that have commuted from Island Life, My House is Worth What, as well as House Hunters. Um, These uh, shows have given us a lot of opportunity, a lot of national exposure, and it's really shown a different side of our community, and I'd like to take a little credit for Yes. Introducing this to HGTV, right. um, my parents actually were a resident here in, in Cocoa Village at Whitley Bay, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what got it all started. I submitted the video content, and I asked them to kind of see what they thought, and they thought that my family did a pretty good job of uh, meeting their criteria, and then um, they decided to you know go through the process. They saw the home that they purchased, which was a, a very large 7,000-square-foot home on the Indian River. And um, they decided that they wanted to pick up that show. And then after we did the main show, they loved it so much. It was one of their their best rated uh, episodes, Mm -hmm. which was called Beaches and Boats. Um, That was such a good show. They actually converted it into a uh, holiday series called Million Dollar Homes of House Hunters. So they actually took the original House Hunters and then turned it into the Million Dollar Homes and um, they edited the original footage from 26 down to about 15 minutes and replayed it. And it was replayed for about three years on all the holidays like Christmas and Thanksgiving, which was really nice. And that started the million dollar home process started here in Brevard County. Yeah, that's kind of when we started getting like the home renovation thing that was on South Tropical mm-hmm. Trail. Mm-hmm. Again, all this stuff kind of stemmed from my relationship with them. And, um, you know, again, it stemmed about 13 mm-hmm. years ago back in 04. And uh, those relationships are very, very strong. Well, I know HGTV a couple of years ago gave away a house on Merritt Island. Exactly. And uh, it's, it's probably things of the past that you were participating in that got HGTV interested in having a house, house for sale. Ha- that house happened to be in Utopia Circle, which is Egret's Cove in South Tropical. My, mm-hmm. my father lived across the street. Uh-huh. No coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What brought you up to Brevard County? Again, all three of us here had our start in South Florida. So what brought you north? Well, what had transpired is, is Miami in 1996. I had graduated at that moment um, from Southwest Miami High. Mm-hmm. Um, and what happened was a lot of things were going on in, in South Florida. You know, mm-hmm. the 90s were a little bit different. And uh, sometimes there was some violence, some other stuff. Mm-hmm. I had just been graduating high school, off mm-hmm. to college. My brother mm-hmm. from middle school to high school mm-hmm. and my sister from elementary to middle. So it was a mm-hmm. great transition time. Um, my father and my mom had a relative here in um Port St. John, and we had been visiting Merritt Island, Cocoa Beach area for a very long time, for about 15, 16 years. And so this opportunity, as we were all transitioning from one school to another, my parents felt it was a good opportunity to leave Dade County and get into a bit more of a quiet, relaxed Mm -hmm. environment so they could finish raising their family. That's funny. That's exactly what brought me up here a little bit, a few years later and a little bit older, and it was my children coming into 
uh, elementary school, we were, the question was, do we stay in South Florida and have him start there, uh, kindergarten, or do we say, let's make a move now so he can grow up here. And, and again, for very similar reasons, it's just such a, it's paradise up here. And for those of you listening all over the world, uh, no offense to South Florida. I still go down there. I do a lot of business down there and enjoy it thoroughly, but from a place to raise your family and enjoy the finer things in life, but in a quieter and more relaxed, uh, way uh, Brevard County can't be beat. Well, we appreciate uh, Ralph telling uh, Ralph Perone Jr. is our guest today, and he gave you a little background on house hunters and his his celebrityism <laughs> as a new word for me there, uh, all on how he got started and and bringing life to Brevard County via the media. But tell us what's been going on since then. That's about thirteen years ago, and you've got into a lot of different things, different aspects with your your businesses. Well, what we've done is we've actually grown quite a bit. Those opportunities opened up so many doors, and it would be foolish for me to not have gone through those doors when they were open. And so at this time, you know, between Perone Properties, which is where we have about 300,000 square feet of commercial space, we have a mass that we property manage full time. Then we've got Perone Realty, which is we've got about 25 agents full time working in our firm to service Brevard County and Orange County. And we have Link Mortgage, which is our house flipping entity, which we actually are being featured here in Island Life, which is a, we just signed a contract yesterday. Yeah. Island Life, HGTV will be sending a crew and they'll be doing on Merritt Island. One of the homes that we renovated will be featured. Um, we also, now, is it an ongoing show or just starting out Island Life? Island Life has been on, for, I think it's on season two. Okay. So it's... Uh, and you're the primary, is it go to different states like House Hunters did? Or are you the primary uh, realtor on that? Island Life is a full series show, and it's going across the. Uh, they've done several shows in uh, Hawaii. It's just any any island uh, anywhere. Mm. It's very similar to House Hunters. Um, I'm not going to be the expert realtor. I actually, was the gentleman who you know we we renovated the home in this case. Okay. Um, the realtor. I'm allowing another firm to represent the buyer, but I'm the owner of the home that's selling mm. it, and that's mm. how they came across the home. It's a nice, beautiful canal home on Merritt Island that they uh, they wanted to feature. Okay, so uh, you were telling about that particular part of your company, and that was, did you say Link Mortgage? Yeah, Link, L-Y-N-K. And what we've done is we've taken the problem childs of a community, some maybe defunct homes, maybe some properties that are a little blighted, and we're basically partnering with the community, and we're purchasing the asset or partnering with the homeowner. And um, that works a lot uh, and there sometimes is to actually partner with the homeowner. And we do the renovation, and we split the profits on the backside. And the homeowner's a winner at that point. Maybe they don't have thirty to fifty thousand dollars to put into the renovation of the kitchen, the bathrooms, the and all the other stuff, the flooring and the paint and the landscaping. Well, we can come in and do that with our team, get the house back up to full market value, bring it to today's current standards, and then we partner with them in the equity, you know, proceeds. Um, so it's a equitable the the mortgage in in lieu of just giving a renovation mortgage, you're giving a loan with an equitable an equity share. I'm trying to think the words I'm looking for here, but an equity share on a payout. What we do is we tie up the property contractually. They usually exit the home because of the amount of repairs that's going to be required. So they normally move on with their life. Normally, these situations could be a tenant who's destroyed a property mm -hmm. and the owner doesn't have the money to fix it. And they don't, you know, they don't want to do a deed in lieu of foreclosure or mm -hmm. they don't want to ding their credit. But they didn't realize that the tenant had done so much damage. They got caught. And I've done a couple of those. Sure. I've done a couple of the states where the family has realized that they could give away the, the you know, to a a vulture or maybe a, a shark where they come in and they purchase the asset for, for pennies on the dollar. Mm -hmm. So by me partnering with them, I don't have to actually come out of pocket with the acquisition costs. So I'm able to partner and split the proceeds with the homeowner, keeping my acquisition costs and I could do more homes this way. Mm -hmm. And then the benefit is that the homeowner doesn't give away the farm. They get an opportunity to enjoy some of the proceeds and, and some of the money that is, is in that home that is just untapped. It's just another source that uh, we talk about on the show because uh, Jonathan has always talked about the hardest hit program to keep you in the house if you're behind on your payments. Here we have another opportunity that if you um, have a home that for whatever reason it needs repairs and it can't be listed um, at that point um, or it would be on pennies on the dollars, you can partner with someone to help you get your house up to up to date and able to sell all kinds of information out there that you may not be aware of. Uh, 
So that that brings us up to a couple other businesses that you're involved in, and I want to make sure we we talk about your charity uh, event coming up. But t- tell us about some of the other things you have besides Link Mortgage and re- renovations. Well, the, one of the other businesses we have is on uh, State Road 520. The business is My VIP mm-hmm. Auto Sales. This is a used car dealership. We're currently the largest used car dealership I'm aware of in Brevard County. We have an 8,000 square foot showroom on State Road 520. Uh, We're doing a lot of cars. We've sold 13 cars so far this week. I think it's only Thursday. So we've got uh, (laughs) three more days to go. I'm hoping to maybe do 20 cars by this end of this week. And um, in doing this uh, car industry, we've basically, we take um, ordinary vehicles and we basically build custom trucks uh, we sell a lot of average vehicles too, just normal stuff, but we do specialize in customs and we do uh, some rims and we do lift kits to trucks or Jeeps, light bars. We do things that uh, help you stand out and we kind of make you uh, a unique individual and provide you that custom ride. Um, and we do that from VIP Auto Sales with Space Coast Customs. And so if you came on to VIP Auto Sales and mm-hmm. you you love this awesomely gorgeous big truck, and you you think it's really cool, but you're not into the 12 inch lift. You only want to go with a four inch lift. Well, that's where Space Coast Customs. We have a shop, and we will build and design the exact truck you want with all the exact materials you want on it, from radio to seat installation and headliners. Your vehicle is customized specifically how you want, and we wrap it all into a finance charge and one monthly payment, which makes it easy. And uh, what we're going to start doing at VIP Autos, effective immediately for the for the folks in Texas and Louisiana. We're going to start um, putting away $50 out of every vehicle sold, and we're going to ben- send that off to the American Red Cross. We're also going to be collecting at, as a drop-off distribution spot at our dealership at 234 East Merritt Island Causeway in Merritt Island, Florida. We're going to go ahead and allow anybody to bring anything that they want to get to those folks out there that they can't, whether it be water, canned goods, tents, sleeping bags. Um, flashlights, anything that you guys want to get out there, we're going to go ahead and get a U-Haul and we'll take it there once a month, twice a month if I have to. Uh, we've been doing stuff where we've been taking things by the uh, plane into the Bahamas to orphanages um, so we can get this done. We can get this into Texas for you. So we'd love to have your help and support to bring anything down to our dealership. That's great. Tell us again the address on your, uh, you had a couple of them, I think you talked about, the is the Space Coast Customs, um, is that in the same dealership uh, location at 234 East Merritt Island Causeway? Yes, yeah, Space Coast Customs is inside the business, and that just allows you, once you've selected the vehicle of your choice as a stock vehicle, it allows you to customize it, and VIP Autos is definitely right there on 520 at 234 East Merritt Island Causeway. It's right across from Red Lobster and Olive Garden. And that's where you can bring uh, donations and supplies for the victims of the storms in both Houston and Louisiana. And again, our thoughts and prayers out to those folks we know here in Florida, how awful that can be. Uh, Thankfully, we've avoided that for a while now and hopefully for a long while to come. But these storms can be awful experiences and any donations, any supplies you can bring. It's not just about money. It's about uh, just everyday life stuff, water, toilet paper, uh, any of the supplies people need when they've been suffered such a major catastrophe. How many people will you be taking? Are you going to need some volunteers to go with you to Texas? No, probably not. We've done this before when we did the planes. It's usually just two two guys. We use it use it from uh, the church group that we're in um, over at East Coast. We'll normally go ahead and pop together some folks and we can get it out there. We've done this quite a few times, um, so it's not a problem for us to handle that. We only have another minute or so, but this fascinates me. When you get to Texas, how do you know where to go to get set up? I mean, law enforcement, the law enforcement will be there. I didn't know if they bring in the, uh, I'm, um, I know the guy who bankrolls FEMA. Uh huh. Yeah. He's a lineage of Coca-Cola. He actually Mm. funds FEMA for the United States. Mm. Um, I have access to that gentleman and he'll be able to get me to the right people that need it in those Mm. communities. And usually I just work with the local sheriff. That's one of the uh, problems that we see, too, when there's a disaster. It's always on a coast, and sometimes the bridges into these places are down, and it's tough. People always think that after the storm, 15 minutes later, I can walk outside, and there's going to be a FEMA truck. That's why they always tell people three days of supplies, because you can't overnight get people to help you because they can't get to you sometimes so this is a great uh, another opportunity to get involved with your community to put out that helping hand to our neighboring um, coastline of uh, states that are experienced what we do from time to time on hurricanes and such 
Ralph Perone Jr., it was a pleasure having you on the show. Please give out your information, how people can get in touch with you or how they can get involved with this, uh, uh, what are you calling it, like a drop-off or a, a what yeah, do you, just you have a, a name a for it? Drop off's probably a good name. I mean, we've done it with toy tots. You know, um, we've done a, a lot of different things. Uh, so we've done this before. It's just that we have a beautiful building. It's eight thousand square feet. Tons of square. Uh, I got a thousand square feet room that I could basically store the stuff. So you know, bring it all to me. We'll house it. We'll collect it for you, and then we'll get it there. Uh, you have a website or? A well, email? the best way to reach me is uh, either my Facebook page at Ralph Perone, or you can contact me at three two one four five two. 9838 or our company website which is perone realty Dot com. <laughs> okay, there we go. And for more information on our show, go to www.yourhometownsolutions.com. And we're here to help you on all different real estate needs. And as we always say, Jonathan, we're here to discuss everything from foreclosures to feng shui. Thank you all for listening. And thank you, Ralph Perone Jr., for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.